professor. Could you please tell me where Milton Berle's dressing room is? I'm sorry, I, I don't know where it is, Mr. Holt. and say ah. Ah. Uh, wider, please. Ah. Ah. Once again. Ah. <laughs> well, how's everything going, Doc? Well, you'll get your report in due time. Mm -hmm. Now turn your head. I want to check your ears. <laughs> uh, turn your head once more. I'll check your ear again. I never... <laughs> Devlin, put the flashlight down, please. <sighs> Very good. Now, let huh? me check the other Fine. side. Sure. All right. Well, when do I get the verdict? Well, I'm going to prescribe a long rest. For me? No. For me. Well, if it isn't the idol of the television screen, Ross Elliott. The Betty Sing. Now, what on earth does the star of young Dr. Pierce probes life want with little old me? Cut my finger on a scalpel during rehearsal. Got a band-aid. Pop yourself there on that cabinet over there. I've got to finish typing these examination reports. I was glad to find out my physical turned out so well. Well, you're not the only one. Everyone in this network seems to be awfully healthy. Oh, that's good to know. Well, listen to this. Michael Mulligan, page staff. Heart, lungs, blood pressure, excellent. This subject is in perfect health. Well, Mulligan sounds like he's a perfect physical specimen. Well, he is. You know, we don't have healthy people like that on my show. Here. Just let me read you the medical report on Jennifer Lovering, girl librarian, who I examined in today's episode. Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah. Get a load of this. Nurse, this patient has one of the rarest conditions known to medical science. Acute, multiple, chronic, neuroelectropharyngitis. <laughs> Prognosis, hopeless. There is no cure. The patient has exactly seven days to live. Seven days to live. Oh, look what I've done. I've typed Jennifer Lovering's diagnosis on Mickey Mulligan's report. Oh, great. You better get out of here, young Dr. Pierce. I can't concentrate with you looking at me with those big brown eyes. See you later, Edna. Thanks for the bandage. Right. Nurse. Yes, doctor? Could you come here a second, please? I'd welcome any interruption, doctor. Hmm. My medical report, Michael Mulligan, page staff. This patient has one of the rarest conditions known to medical science. <laughs> Acute, multiple, chronic, neuro, electro, pharyngitis. Prognosis, hopeless. There is no cure. Patient has seven, seven days 
chance to live. Hey, Mick. Mick, guess what? Finally got two tickets for the big fight a week from Thursday night. A week from Thursday night? Yeah. It's too late. Too late? What are you talking about? It's only eight days away. This is the one you don't want to miss. I'm afraid you'll have to ask somebody else to go with you. I won't be available. Ask somebody else. Mick, just this morning you said to me I'd rather drop dead than miss this fight. The things that are said in jest. Huh? I'm sorry, old friend. I won't be able to go with you. I have another appointment. And I can't break it. What's eating him? Oh, hi, Mickey. Hello, Pat. Well, what are you so happy about? Oh, I've just been thinking about things, it's all. It's funny how one thinks about things when... Things are the way they are. Would you give me that again, please? Pat, if I weren't around, what kind of a boyfriend would you have to replace me? <laughs> well, I'm not thinking of replacing you with anybody. Not just yet, anyway. <laughs> Those are very encouraging words. But the time has come for us to be realistic. Well, I am being realistic. <laughs> And now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. The right man for you would be about 30-ish, I'd say. Mature, but not too sophisticated. Sounds interesting. Be tall, handsome, smokes a pipe, <laughs> wears tweeds. A Princeton graduate. Harvard class of 43. He's a wonderful dancer and takes me only to the best places. Every head waiter in town knows his name. And what would his name be? His name is Tyrone. His name is... His name is Tyrone? How long have you been seeing him, Pat? Oh, Mickey, this is silly. I'm definitely not trading you in on any Tyrone. Now, I've got to get these bulletins out. Just remember, Pat, no matter what happens, you and Tyrone have my blessing. <laughs> Seating him. See you tomorrow, Mick. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Excuse me. Uh, they told me I might find Michael Mulligan down here. Yes, sir. I, I am he. I'm uh, James Dodd of the Security Mutual Insurance Company. How do you do, sir? Uh, didn't you get my letter telling you your life insurance policy is about to lapse? Lapse? Yes, run out. How soon? The 24th this month. <laughs> Photo finish. I beg your pardon? Yeah, I was just thinking how fate plays little tricks on one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, this is a very small premium. And just think, you'll have this policy all paid up in another 40 years. <laughs> 40 years, it'll be all paid up. Yes, then you'll have $5,000 to spend any way you want. $5,000. Pardon me, sir. Could I possibly have the money transferred over to somebody else? Sure, your beneficiaries. Your mother and father. Mom and Pop, sure. Gosh, they... They sure could use $5,000. Yeah, well, it's a small premium, only $12. Mom's had her eye on that platinum wristwatch. Pop's always wanted that cute convertible. <laughs> well, here's your receipt. Yeah, $12, you That's say. That's right. I see. Now, I'll just get it for you right here, sir. $10, to $12. There you are, sir. Oh, and there's your receipt, and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, uh, take good care of yourself. You know, my firm would hate to lose $5,000. It'll hurt me more than it does you. <laughs> well, I'll see you next month. Don't, don't count on it. Hello, mid 
Town Motors? Uh, this is Mickey Mulligan speaking. You folks have a two-tone convertible in the window now, I believe. Oh, Michael, it's beautiful. But you can't afford to give me a watch like this. Well, you always wanted a watch like that, Mom, and that's good enough for me. Oh, but I can't let you. Mom, the joy is in giving. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Wear it well. Wear it well. What time is it? I don't know what time it is, Mom. I'm not wearing my watch anymore. For some reason, I... I just don't care to know what time it is anymore. That's funny. Jennifer Lovering doesn't want to know what time it is either. She hit every clock in her house. Jennifer Lovering? Yeah, she's a girl librarian on that television show, Young Dr. Pierce Probes Life. Poor dear, she only has seven days to live. <laughs> only seven days to live. Huh. That's ironic. Hello, Michael. Hi, Pop. Hi, now. Hmm. You didn't tell me we were having company. Where are they? Company? No, what are you talking about? I'm talking about whoever owns that classy new convertible. Classy convertible? They're sitting out in our driveway. Whose is it? It's yours, Pop. Mine? His? You always wanted it. Now it's yours. Well, that's very nice of you, son, but I'd like to know where you... Joe, look at the beautiful watch that Michael gave me. Would you mind telling me where you're getting one? I know. You finally won a raffle at the studio. <laughs> no, let's just say they're... heaven sent. <laughs> Only six more days. Huh? Well, nothing. Nothing on Just facing the future with a smile, Freddy. Hey, Mick. You sure you know what you're doing, giving me your bowling ball? Of course, I want you to have my bowling ball, Freddy. And I, I hope it brings you as much luck as it's brought me. What luck? You haven't bowled over a hundred since we started. You know, it's funny. I used to think my bowling score was important. Strange how your sense of values change. Yeah. Oh. Say, Mick, you know, there's a lot of sentiment attached to this ball, Freddy. In fact, I hit my very first pin with it. <laughs> For that matter, I, I bowled my first strike with it. You also broke your first toe with it, too. Remember when you dropped the ball <laughs> on your foot? That was... <laughs> wait a minute. That's me. Fingers are stuck. Wait a minute, I can't get them out. Wait, wait, my help. fingers got fat or something. Wait a minute. No, they won't come. They're stuck in it. Wait a minute, let's not... Let's not lose our heads now. You just pull and I'll pull. I'll count three. All ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> it's no good, Nick. Huh? No. Maybe we ought to call a plumber. Huh? No, never mind. Just pull. It. It's not coming. It's not coming, Freddie. It's not coming at all. I'll tell you what. I'll get a hacksaw. A hacksaw? <laughs> not for your fingers. A bowling ball. Now, don't you move. Fate is really ganging up on me. Yes, sir. I'm Gus Henderson, sales manager of Midtown Motors. How do you do, sir? Oh, <laughs> so what happened to you two, huh? Huh? Same thing happened to me once. Well, I don't fight it, just relax. Uh, well, what cool? What'll I do? Put it down on the bench. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, now, 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 stop fighting it. You got a mental block. Huh? Just ignore <laughs> it. And before you know it, your fingers will just slip out. Oh, that's, that's mighty easy to say, sir, but I, I, I've tried everything. We pulled, and, and believe me, nothing is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your advice, sir. Now you see what a mental block can do? Yes, yes, I do. Well, now maybe you can get me out of one. Well, what is it you want me to do? Well, you bought a car from one of my overeager salesmen yesterday and promised to pay for it in a week. I believe that's so. Well, I can't allow a deal like that to go through. Where's the money coming from? Money? Yes, the money. <laughs> from this... This is a $5,000 insurance policy. But that isn't worth anything while you're alive. And you've got a lot of good mileage left. <laughs> Mr. Henderson, it's not what's on the outside that counts. It's... That's under the floor. Now, just a minute, Mulligan. I might be known as soft-hearted Henderson on television, but I'm also a, a pretty shrewd businessman. And I'm not giving away a brand new car for an insurance policy that'll pay off a hundred years from now. Not a hundred years, Mr. Henderson. Only six days. Just 
read that? Right down there at the bottom. Prognosis hopeless. Hopeless. Seven days to... Oh, I didn't know. All right, sir. I'm carrying on with a smile. I admire your courage, son. Thank you. Your credit's good with me. Thank you, sir. You keep the car. I'm going to throw in a set of white wall tires. Tubeless. More than kind. Could, could you use fog lights? <laughs> You'll get them. Don't, don't come apart now, Mr. Henderson. I know, but you're so brave. It just, it just, I feel it right here. Well, no, no, sir, thank you very much. I can't help it. I don't want you to break down. I better down. get out of here. I'll be crying I'm like a baby. Never mind. Please, sir. work as usual. <laughs> hey, Mick, you want to up at Mr. Brown's office on a double? It's an emergency. Oh. Wait a minute. I, I, I... <laughs> yes. Yes, that's right. And you will hurry. We don't know how long before it'll go off. Yes, that's right. That's right. We What's discovered up? about 20 minutes ago. It's in one of the studios. Yes, yes, we, we've taken every precaution to keep everyone out of the area. Oh, you will hurry, won't you? Yes, sir? You wanted to see me, Mr. Brown? Mulligan, where have you been? Just down in the locker room. Is something wrong? Something wrong? A crank just left a time bomb in Studio B, that's all. A time bomb? What? That's terrible. Who'd do a thing like that? Oh, he's just plain crazy. Just because he didn't win first prize on the What's Your Invention show with his homemade time bomb, he planted it in the studio and left. I, I think that's terrible. Look, I've stationed all pages around the building. They're not to allow anyone near Studio B. Yes. You take the north corridor with Devlin. Yes, sir. Mr. Brown, the demolition squad will be here as soon as they can. Good, Pat. Thank you. I just hope it waits for them to get here. Mr. Brown, sir, I'd like to volunteer to defuse that bomb. What's that? Huh? This, oh, well, this, it's just a mental block. Mental block? It looks like a bowling ball to me. Well, ne never mind about that, sir. I'd like to volunteer to defuse the bomb. I have my reasons. This is no job for an amateur. It could cost you your life. My life? <laughs> what does a few days mean here or there? Look, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to let you defuse that bomb. All right, Mr. Brown, I'll go. Soft-hearted Henderson won't have to wait six days. <laughs> Mickey, you forgot your book. <laughs> Say, before you tackle that bomb, may I have a word with you? Hi there, I'm Mickey Rooney. I heard about it, Freddy. In fact, I'm on the way in there now to defuse it. To, to, to what? Hey, look, fella, I just got one quick look at that bomb. You couldn't pay me to go in there again. I got my whole life ahead of me. That's where you and I differ, my friend. <laughs> hey, hey, Mick, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Freddy, Freddy, stand back. <laughs> wait a minute, Mick, you... Get all that nerve all of a sudden. Spunky. That's what he is. Spunky. <laughs> I gotta go tell Mr. Brown. Go ahead and blow me up for all I care. I have nothing to lose. Just remember this, you diabolical machine. Only one of us is gonna leave this room alive. <laughs> I told you he was in there. Great Scott. Mickey. Let's not startle him. Don't even breathe. Mickey. Mickey. 
Uh, Mr. Brown, if you'll just hold still a minute, I'll saw the ball off for you. You call it me, you devil. I'm trying to forget that it was you who let Mulligan get in that studio. Mulligan, this is Mr. Brown. I'm speaking to you from the control booth. Yes, Mr. Brown? I want you to do exactly as I say. Now leave that bomb alone and walk slowly toward the door. And hurry! Mr. Brown, is that my bowling ball you have in your hand, sir? Never mind the bowling ball. Get out of there, quick! It's a mental block. Just relax your hand and it'll come off easy as pie. Will you forget about the bowling ball? That bomb is liable to go off at any minute. What do I care? My days are numbered anyway. Why should anyone else risk their life? his mind. Nikki, this is Pat. Listen to me. Please get out of there. Mr. Brown, I refuse to go on today. Oh, for heaven's sake, Ellie. You can get yourself another young Dr. Pierce. I just discovered that none of these medical cases I'm supposed to be treating are on the level. Will you get out, Elliot? That Jennifer Lovering episode yesterday, it was completely phony. I checked with a real doctor, and there is no such disease as acute, multiple, chronic, neuroelectropharyngitis. Oh, yes, there is such a disease, and I have it. It says so right here on my medical report. Well, you can't have it. But I do have it. Well, that report's a mistake. I was in the office when the nurse typed it from this script. Why, that's just a typographical error. You, you, you mean I, I've been... Suffering from a typographical error? <laughs> and I... I haven't got only six days to live? The nurse showed me a real report. You're a perfect physical specimen. Why, you live to be a hundred. Don't, don't... Don't count. Count on it. Now, Mulligan, will you please get out of there? I can't move! My feet are baby! It's just a metal block, you know, boy. Like with a bowling ball. You... Mickey, don't get excited. Just walk to the door. The demolition squad's on the way. Michael! <laughs> Sneaky way to collect your insurance. A bomb. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh Monica, sir. I thought you might like these chrome curb feelers. Later, Mr. Henderson. Later. Oh, oh he's so brave. It gets me right here. Ah! Look out, Pop. There's a bomb following me. Where? Huh? Over there. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Bomb? Hey, hey, you got me back there. Huh? A dud. How about that? It's a dud. Yeah, just like my medical report was. Well, I guess I'm gonna be all right now, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna be. <laughs> Anybody know where I can find another Bob? Becky Rooney will be back in just a moment. Hello, friends. That was the important message from the wonderful folks who bring you our next show. Be with us then, won't you? Incidentally, that, that medical report caused a lot of trouble, didn't it? But it's all straightened out now. And the soft-hearted Mr. Henderson, he took his car back and Mom returned the watch. 
and that bomb, you know, that wasn't real. It was just a phony. In fact, we disassembled it. I've got some of the parts right here in the box. I've got the wire. I've got the, the clock here. I've got the... No. No, no. <laughs> Good night, folks.